Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Z James. This is Z32 Workshop. And this beside me, behind me, is my 1993 Nissan 300ZX convertible uh, autocross car, weekend car, fun car, not a daily. Because um, honestly, don't have a 300ZX as a daily. Um, they're fun, they're amazing cars, but you gotta spend a lot of money to make them reliable. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. Um, I know it's been a little bit, well, I'm going to address things why I haven't been on the channel doing a lot of videos here lately. I've had a lot of family stuff come up here recently. Um, that just summertime with the kids and family, so I haven't been out in the shop to do stuff. But today is an episode where I'm going to fix a flaw that Nissan fixed themselves, just not in the earlier 300ZXs. And anyone who knows anything, I think it's from like 92, 93, I can't remember the exact date. Um, four, not say four, it's backwards, so like the 89s. Um, the fueling system, not the system itself, but the clamps they used. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about. Anyone who has one of these cars knows that these guys right here work themselves loose. These are just the uh, fuel hose clamps. Um, but you have to tighten them down every winter and every spring. Um, they're a problematic because they are everywhere. I mean, you've got one, two, three, well, technically four or five, but that's, these are just hose clamps. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and then there's more beneath there. Um, they are a problem. And like I said, they work themselves loose. They, the hose shrinks and they don't adjust. So, Nissan's res response is to have, um, let me open these up. Well, <laughs> sorry, let me back this up. So their solution was to put uh, a spring clamp in and not just any ordinary spring clamp like you see on these. These are actually have got a double spring into them. Then instead of just being curved metal and clamped, they've got two. And I bought a whole freaking set. <laughs> uh, these were for Concept Z Performance. Uh, let's see here, part number 16439E0A. Uh, I bought 20 of them, which is a little overkill. And these little suckers, unfortunately, are pricey. But completely worth it so you don't burn your car down, which has been documented and done for these cars for being a problem. So my solution is to get rid of them, because the reason I'm doing this is because I'm not even joking. Normally, it's in spring and fall. I actually had one of these hoses leak on me this summer back the car to the garage. I'm like, it's all kind of gassy. That seems a little weird. I tried to drive it about three blocks and I'm like, that gas smell ain't going away. Stop. And I had the whole front valley of the engine was just covered with fuel because it had, the hose had shifted for whatever reason, expanded, loosened, whatever, enough to get the, the leak to happen. And it was just dumping fuel on top of the motor. Now granted the car was running, but it wasn't hot yet. So it wasn't, I mean, it was vaporizing, but it wasn't like on a very hot motor without super hot exhaust yet. So I shut it down. Uh, luckily enough, I had a screwdriver in the glove box, popped it open, found one, just gave it another quarter turn and it sealed itself up. And at that point I was done with it. I am done screwing with this. I want to be able to start the key up in the spring and fall without dealing with it. So I end up buying these guys. Uh, let me get them opened up here for you. So bear with me a second here, guys. So let's take a look at these clamps here. Um, like I said, I got two sets. I got these from Concept Z. These are really good. These are just sets of 10. And unfortunately, Nissan has gotten to be a little pricey on these things. And when I say that, these are like $6 a hose clamp for an injector hose clamp. And I'll show you what the difference is. Because if you can see that, hopefully you guys can see that really well. It's double sprung. Now, I have a whole bunch of normal hose clamps, and I'll get one of those in a second. Let's see if I can find one of those real fast for you guys. Hang on, guys. This will have to be edited, so whoop, whoop. Sorts of those 
Let's go through this. Woo! All right, back at it, guys. Um, so this is the new one. And you can tell it's uh, double sprung. Let me get this seat. You can see that. Um, now, a normal hose clamp, if this is not the right size, but it's only single wall. They don't have a double there to help give it the better constant pressure for us. And then this is like the injector one, where it's just a screw type, which is great for clamping for us, but the hose shrinks a little bit, you don't have the same clamping force. Whereas this, this is a constant pressure. So that's what we're gonna put the, on the car. So it's gonna basically be me a little time lapse, um, basically removing the fuel, not fuel rail, but the fuel system from here out. Cause I wanna replace the, these two. So basically from the filter, from the hard lines here, up through the system, I'm gonna pull that whole wiring system out of the way to redo these because it's frankly, I just don't want to deal with it anymore. It's a pain in the butt. So let's get you guys to uh, time warp doing this. Um, nothing special, I'll take this stuff off. Um, the only thing that is, is all of these. And then there is a, I believe these are 10 millimeter nuts here to get these off. I think those are the only two hard lines. Oh no, there is another spot over here. So you've got four nuts you gotta get rid of. So nothing too crazy, one, two, three, four, if you can see it right there, four, um, to remove the rail, uh, not rail, um, the fuel system, because it's the to and from, because this is not a deadhead system. It goes directly, it's got a return, so this is the feed, and then this is the return to go do it.
Boom, off time warp. Um, a little more muts uh, and bolts I forgot about just because it's been a while since I pulled that off. Um, so here's the system without it. I left this one on just because it was easier to deal with. This is the feed line, return line. Took the fuel filter out. And coming across, you have the two here. I forgot about the two nuts that were right here along with this guy, these two, and then a that guy right there. So those plus that, I think that guy, yes. So there's quite a few. In fact, let's go over here, you can see them all. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's to get this all off so I can replace all these little suckers um, with the actual clamps, which is gonna make this worse. Um, to deal with. Um, don't worry about this tape. This was just me watching to make sure I didn't have any um, rubbing issues. And this the same as what this is. This is so my sway bar, or not sway bar, my uh, strut tower bar brace doesn't cut into the fuel line. So I took another slightly bigger hose, split it, and just sort of keep it in that spot so there's no rubbing, no chance of this ever getting cut on that. Um, and that's it. We're gonna replace all these next. So here's another time warp.
I don't know if my time lapse is working. The GoPro messed up, battery got dead, I didn't hear it beep, one or the other, I'm not sure. Uh, let's go review real fast what I've done. I'm not done yet, but uh, let's see where we're at first. Is I've got the new one down here for the pressure regulator, if I remember right, or dampener, can't remember which one. Uh, I put the clamp down on the bottom first, cut the hose, put it right to the regulator, push that on first, then push that down and pull that up. I hope that makes sense to you guys. So I cut the hose, put the clamp down on the bottom with no hose, put the hose onto the regulator on there, and put the clamp on it and then slid it down, oiled everything up, slid it down, pulled it up, and then tighten these down. That's the first one. <clears throat> Next up I did was the fuel filter. Same thing, cut the hose, put the clamp on here first, then put the hose on, put both clamps on, slid them in, put the fuel filter, slid it on, and then push, put that clamp in the spot, and then push that clamp in the spot. Uh, same thing with this guy. Uh, I was able to put the hose clamp onto the hose first after I cut it, slid it onto the fuel filter, and then slid the clamp on. Same way with this, put the clamp on first, then put the uh, pressure sensor there on. Same with this hose, put the pressure sensor on. This chunk of hose here is this here so it can lay in here without rusting or vibrating uh, on that. The next up that we're working on is this guy here, and hopefully it works. My battery may die again, I do apologize. I'm trying to record this stuff for you to know what's going on for these. Uh, once again, cut the hose, put the clamp on afterwards, slid it on, because this is going to go onto the car, and then this is going to slide on. And I'm oiling these up because these hoses, without them, they'll, you'll never get them on. And this hose, since it's fresh, it was at the bottom of the roll, which is why it's tight, isn't necessarily round. The pressure and the heat of the car will fix this. Just right now, getting it on is kind of a, how should we say, pain. So we're almost done here getting most of the stuff uh, hooked up. So this is going to go on next for here. So I'll put you on time lapse again. So three, two, one. Woo!
set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Boom, all time work uh, So slower process than I like to see And I'm not happy with the clamps uh, I'm happy they're, they're kind of paying about like I knew they were going to be um, But as you can see, they're deforming I had three of them pretty much go that way get really it's like this tab is way off that's really bent and then that's sort of that guy um it came from clamping like pinching it how should i show it it happened because of this because i was in here too tight too close like this and it pulled them out that being said i had a pack i still got one good one left uh let's take a look at my work we'll go through it um one thing I did do is a little bit, I shortened this one up by maybe 10 millimeters. I wanted to see, because right now it was trying to sit in that notch. Um, and I've got a protective coop. So hopefully it works. I don't know. I'm a little concerned with this beam. I may have to redo this stretch. But everything seemingly went on A-OK-ish. Um, just harder than what you gotta do is fight. I don't know how to re-put that back in the right spot. That's my bad. Um, so those went on. That's not bad. That one's a little bit of fight. Um, those weren't too horrible either. So all in all, I mean, it's a, it's a fair process. Let me start the engine up and take a look. Let's see if there's no leaks. So they prime the system once or twice. Sorry about the fan noise. Uh, kind of need it because, well, frankly, it's uh, hot in a garage. So let's pump the system, prime the system here. system up that's fine good but I'll hang on to them nonetheless uh, for all the clamps that I use and pulled off as you can see I pulled off an obscene amount this is even everything of these hose clamps or injector clamps off and I don't like them for the simple fact that they come loose uh, oh and I did find a normal one that isn't double double spring to handle the pressure this won't do this will um, it's more of a factory style setup. I could go to something much fancier if I wanted to, but I don't like AN fittings, and I really don't want to spend that type of money, although this was not cheap itself. But for me, it's peace of mind to make sure that there was nothing that, um, I should say, starts to car on fire. 
Uh, that being said, there are two of them that I have not done yet, and I will do those when I put the twin turbo motor in, and I will do those properly with these clamps, so I'll have to buy another one of these little bastards. Maybe a couple just to have spares. So when I do the front ones, to make sure I get everything taken care of. Uh, once again, my name is E. James, this is E32 Workshop, and I hope you guys are finding this information uh, informative and helpful for your own projects and endeavors on this stuff. If you have any comments or questions, hit me up below. Everyone take care. Bye.